Hello and welcome to this XITech video overview of some of the new features you can expect to find in Rev MEP 2020. My name is Ian Garwood and I'm a consultant with the professional services team here at XITech. The electrical panel feed through lugs feature in Revit 2020 provides an alternative to the notion that all sub panels are fed via a breaker in a main panel. In this simple example, there are two panels, DB1 and DB2. And there are two panel schedules, each panel schedule showing circuits one to five and just two circuits on each. The procedure to create a new circuit in Revit MEP 2020 is the same as it is for previous releases. And making DB2 a sub-panel of DB1 is exactly the same. A review of the panel schedule for DB1 shows the addition of DB2 connected to the circuit breakers of the panel. And just to recap, the circuit numbering is 1 to 5, the same as it is on DB2. So far, everything about creating an electrical circuit in Revit MEP 2020 appears to be the same. But if we take a look at panel properties, we'll see the addition of something called feed through lugs. Setting this property in the main panel will mean that any sub panel will not be assumed to be connected to a breaker in the main panel. To complete this setup, activate the circuit properties and change the connection type from breaker to feed through lugs. A review of the panel schedule for DB1 will show that whilst DB2 is still connected to DB1, it is no longer connected through a breaker. A review of the circuit numbering shows 1 to 5, and the same on DB2. The final step in this new feature, if required, is to change the circuit numbering options for the sub panel. From the panel's properties, change your circuit numbering options from default to continued numbering. A final look at the panel schedules will show that the circuit numbering for DB2 has now continued from the circuit numbering on DB1. With these options, you will find that the sub-panel's loads have been totaled on the main panel. In previous releases of Revit MEP, a limited range of families contained the properties elevation and offset. In Revit MEP 2020, these properties have been renamed to elevation from level and offset from host. They represent exactly the same thing, but have just been renamed for clarity. In addition to the renaming of these parameters, the list of categories that these parameters have been added to has been increased to include the list seen here. So what is the significance of these new changes, apart from being able to monitor the elevation of more categories? The new elevation from level parameter is now schedulable. This means no more potentially time-consuming workarounds to retrieve elevation information, that information being available across more categories than before. And of course, once the elevation from level information has been scheduled, it makes it easier to review the information in my project and to drive changes where needed. The new elevation from level parameter can also be used in view templates and in tags, where, as an instance tag, it can be used to drive the elevation of specific instances within the project model. In the 2019.2 version of Revit, when drawing duct, conduit or cable tray, the property previously known as offset was changed to middle elevation. And to add clarity when drawing any of these services, bottom elevation and top elevation were also added to the properties, making it easier to alter the elevation of any service after it's been created by simply picking on it and changing the appropriate value, with both top elevation and bottom elevation schedulable properties. In the 2020 release of Revit MEP, the feature has been extended 
to include pipework. Either before the pipework has been created or afterwards, change the top, middle or bottom elevation from the properties.